Prior to any discussion about genetic editing in humans for clinical purposes, we first need to talk about the latest technology that has taken over the world that is used in DNA editing, and that is the CRISPR method. CRISPR acronym is very catchy, but it stands for clustered, regularly interspaced, short palindromic regions, which in itself sounds quite meaningless, but I'll just tell you that it refers to short DNA elements that bacteria can use like a catalog in order to recognize invading viruses. So let me show you what I mean. Here is a bacterial cell happily existing on the right hand side of our screen. But right away it will be invaded by a virus. So check this out. There is a virus, boom, it enters the cell. What can bacteria do? Well, what bacteria does is it uses its own machinery, its own tiny molecular robot in order to duplicate that viral molecule, genetic molecule, and make it into a short, tiny DNA fragment that then another molecular robot within the cell will be able to take it and stitch it right into its own bacterial genome. And this is what I meant by the fact that bacteria can create a catalog of invading DNA viruses or RNA viruses, which then it can use to fight back. So let me show you how that looks. And here comes the army of invading viruses. Now bacteria will have to wonder, oh my goodness, will I be able to survive this attack or not? Well, at least the bacteria cell now has a weapon. It can use its catalog of previous invasions and send out a little robot that will fight back. And this robot is attached to a viral molecule taken from that catalog and the robot itself can then try to destroy invading viruses if they match the molecule that the robot is attached to. And this tiny little molecular robot is called Cas9, which stands for CRISPR associated protein 9. So let's see what happens. Here comes a viral molecule, boom, it enters the cell. And let's see if there is a match. And if there is, that tiny little molecular robot will cut it up and destroy the invading virus. So in essence, CRISPR is like a bacterial immune system, if you will, that we have hijacked in order to be able to edit DNA at will. So now let's take a look what that looks like. So here is your DNA happily laid out on our screen, and we want to edit it in a specific spot. So we can now use Cas9 protein attached to a specific genetic information that will allow Cas9 to recognize any site within your DNA that we desire. So we can send it into that specific location and there is a match. Once the match occurs, just like what we've observed previously with the viral infection, Cas9 will cut the DNA. And it cuts the DNA at both strands. So in essence, it breaks the DNA in half. Once that is done, Cas9's job is done and it can be removed. But your cells are going to freak out. They hate double-stranded breaks in the DNA because they're dangerous. This is how you can introduce mutations. So your cell will send 
the molecular robot to fix it, not unlike what we have seen previously in the bacteria. But here's where we can cheat. We can also send information in the form of DNA that will act as a template to introduce the mutation. And what we hope is that in the process of fixing this DNA break, that mutated template will be used to introduce the mutation we desire. And this is in essence how the original CRISPR-Cas9 technology works. Since then, there have been many reiteration of this process so that it is becoming more accurate and more refined and simpler along the way. So we are getting closer and closer to clinical use of this technology in the future.